today we're going to be talking about osteomyelitis. Let's start off with what is osteomyelitis. If we break down the word, osteo means bone, myelo means marrow, and itis refers to inflammation. Therefore, osteomyelitis means inflammation of the bone and bone marrow. This inflammation is usually caused by an infection, and this infection can either be pyogenic or non-pyogenic. Staphylococcus aureus is the most common cause of pyogenic osteomyelitis, and the most common cause of non-pyogenic osteomyelitis is mycobacterium tuberculosis. There are three main mechanisms by which infection can get into the bone. Osteomyelitis can occur as a result of hematogenous seeding during a bacteremic episode, contiguous spread of infection from adjacent soft tissues and joints, or by direct inoculation of infection into the bone as a result of trauma or surgery. Infection resulting from hematogenous spread is usually monomicrobial, while osteomyelitis due to contiguous spread or direct inoculation is usually polymicrobial. Osteomyelitis can be categorized as being either acute or chronic. Chronic osteomyelitis is characterized by the presence of sequestra. A sequestrum is a piece of separated dead bone that results from the disruption in periosteal blood supply and subsequent bone necrosis. The layer of new bone that forms in the areas of periosteal damage is known as an involucrum. Other hallmarks of chronic osteomyelitis include local bone loss, an extension of infection through cortical bone known as sinus tracts. Osteomyelitis is more common in children than in adults, and boys are affected nearly twice as often as girls are. The majority of pediatric cases occur in the lung bones of children under the age of 5. In adults, hematogenous spread is less common as there is no cartilage growth plate, and spread is more commonly post-traumatic or post-surgical. The vertebra are also more commonly affected in adults than in children. As always, in order to diagnose osteomyelitis, it is important to take a detailed history, do a thorough examination, and conduct relevant investigations. In general, initial symptoms of osteomyelitis in all age groups are non-specific, such as malaise, mild fever, irritability, and decreased appetite. However, as the infection progresses, symptoms become more localized. These symptoms vary within age groups depending on the specific characteristics of the developing bone. Younger infants tend to present with symptoms of irritability, vomiting, and swelling, and pseudoparalysis. In comparison, older children, adolescents, and adults complain of localized pain and swelling of the affected area, often accompanied by loss of function of the limb. There are a number of risk factors that can raise your clinical suspicion of osteomyelitis, including prematurity in neonates, diabetes, recent injury or surgery, sickle cell disease, splenectomy, and drug use. As in all orthopedic clinical examinations, it is important to look, feel, and move. Look for scars, evidence of disturbed wound healing, and the cardinal signs of inflammation. Assess for tenderness and pain in the affected area, and assess the range of motion in the joints. Remember to examine the joint above and the joint below, and to check the neurovascular status of the limb. Special investigations can be divided into two main sections, laboratory studies and imaging. Laboratory studies are useful for diagnosis and to monitor response to treatment. Important laboratory tests include a full blood count and white cell count, which can be increased or normal, CRP, which is generally increased within six hours of infection and is used to monitor the course of treatment. ESR can be measured, but it is less specific than CRP for skeletal infection. Blood culture is often negative, and so clinical suspicion generally dictates treatment. Where possible, a bone aspiration is required for definitive diagnosis. In terms of imaging studies, x-rays are indicated in all cases of suspected osteomyelitis. Findings on x-ray tend to follow a specific timeline. Acutely, x-rays are generally normal, maybe with some soft tissue swelling, as shown in this x-ray. Thereafter, they may show features such as periosteal elevation due to a subperiosteal abscess or periosteal reaction and after 10 to 14 days, there may be features of osteolysis. This x-ray shows a lytic lesion with a sclerotic margin that is suggestive of chronic osteomyelitis. CT scans can show various pathology associated with osteomyelitis, such as cortical destruction, periosteal reaction, periosteal purulence, sequestrum, and lytic lesions with or without surrounding sclerosis in the metaphyseal area.
Bone scans are usually best for early detection of bone infection, as they can confirm the diagnosis within 24 to 48 hours. They can localize the focus of infection by visualizing bone metabolism and bone remodeling, which other imaging techniques cannot. Here one can see the increased uptake in the right distal tibia, indicating metaphyseal osteomyelitis of the bone. MRI scans are not required for the diagnosis of osteomyelitis, but can help to show surrounding soft tissue pathology and inflammatory changes. There are four key aspects in the management of osteomyelitis. Analgesia and rehydration, splintage of the affected area for comfort and to prevent joint contractures, antibiotic therapy, and surgical drainage. The empiric antibiotic of choice will vary according to the likely pathogen, the susceptibility of the organism, age of the patient, and clinical features. Patients diagnosed with osteomyelitis are usually started on empiric antibiotics for four to six weeks. Although management is primarily medical, there are three main indications for surgical management. If the infection fails to respond to antibiotics within the first 48 to 72 hours, if there are subperiosteal and soft tissue abscesses present, and if devitalized bone needs to be excised and debrided. Unfortunately, even in patients treated appropriately, complications of osteomyelitis can occur. These include recurrence of bone infection, bone destruction and pathological fractures, chronic osteomyelitis, and impaired bone growth in children. Early diagnosis of osteomyelitis is key to preventing associated morbidity and mortality. Thank you for watching our video.